Welcome everyone to the first recap video of Quiddy Clash. This is your boy Fuel Day and we've had some incredible matches this first week. The Bardmeister will announce the power rankings of each of our players followed by me again with the lowlights and highlights of the week. Make sure to subscribe to our Twitch to catch the matches live and find our indie game podcast anywhere you get podcasts. Welcome to the League and Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, oh Bartledew. Oh Bartledew is a brand new smasher, and unfortunately, it shows in their recovery. They struggled badly with their ability to return to the stage. However, regardless of how novice they are, oh Bartledew's Bowser can cause some damage on stage. Bowser's strength, size, and speed are deadly in any player's hands, and oh Bartledew made everyone aware of that with huge smash attack KOs. A bit of practice on their recovery will take O Bartledew's game to the next level. Either way, we are excited that O Bartledew is already making an impact on games, regardless of how new they are to the fight. Kelly self detonated into the league with their main snake. Unfortunately, Kelly has not yet secured a win, but all three games so far were against some of the toughest fighters in the league. Kelly has their best matchups ahead, and maybe the brutal initiation to the league will have prepared them for what's to come. Kelly's snake poses a huge threat on the stage, even if the explosives aren't hitting. Snake makes a huge spatial impact for everyone, including teammates. What we would like to see from Kelly is some more consistent damage output with Snake, as well as surviving a bit longer since Snake is so heavy. Rough start for Scat going winless in the first week of the Quarty Clash. Over their first two games, they averaged over 500 damage a game. The two games after have proved more challenging, resulting in zero KOs and only dealing a little over 100 damage a game. The reason for this? Scat's first two games they played as the plant. This could be a matter of matchup or a matter of familiarity with the character. If Scat sticks with the plant, there's a good chance we see him climbing this list due to his potential for damage output alone. If Scat continues to explore character options, however, we are curious to see what kind of adjustment is made to start getting some wins. David enters the league with a strong performance damage-wise, but a win percentage that doesn't reflect it. Even in the game that David won, his damage given was very high, but left the KO roll to their teammate. We have mostly seen Cloud from David so far, but we are aware of their skill with Link too, who has only made an appearance just once. David's matchups so far have been extremely tough, fighting against many of our highest ranks. We are looking forward to upcoming matchups to see if David's Cloud begins to secure the KOs that they deserve for all the damage they are dealing. Amorellis was thrown right up against some serious competition in week one. Their Pikachu secured a win in their first game, but the following two were up against some of our strongest, so they suffered some tough losses. We know what Amorellis' Pikachu is capable of in 1v1, and we are now seeing them adjust to the chaos of 2v2. Amorellis demonstrates good awareness of their teammate, and uses Pikachu's Thunderbolt to help create offensive openings for the both of them. We are expecting Amorellis to perform well in the coming matchups, and compete for higher rankings in the list. V-Shift has brought a different character to each match so far. Out of all of them, their Inkling has shown the strongest performance. V-Shift is beginning with a struggle in win percentage. However, the losses so far were against some of the toughest fighters in the league. We have an idea of V-Shift's skill level from the preliminaries, and we predict strong performance in the coming games now that they have gotten some of their toughest matchups out of the way. We are interested to see if V-Shift continues to choose different characters, or if they find a groove with one in particular. Erikandor opened up the league with a couple of tough losses as Diddy Kong and Captain Falcon, but by Game 3 they made an adjustment to Falco that turned things around. Erikandor is on a two-win streak with Falco right now, and it seems to have found a rhythm with the character. We've seen Erikandor laser-stun enemies to create openings for his partner, protect themselves and team from returning projectile fire, take on a Slayer role when their partner had less KO options, and make quick decisions that allowed their team to secure KOs all suitable actions for their character choice. This fantastic display shows us Eric and Dor's ability to adapt, and we are excited to see if they continue this win streak with Falco. Nerd Cruncher has only played two games so far, 
but they have shown us a strategic playstyle. Nerd Cruncher is extremely team-oriented, tightly sticking by their partner and timing attacks with theirs. Nerd Cruncher's approach is very deliberate, even in 2v2 where strategy often crumbles into spamming and mashing. We're anticipating Nerd's stats to start reflecting their true impact on the game as they play more matches. Field Day sits right in the middle of the ranks, opening with a couple of wins and a couple of losses. Those who know Field Day know we haven't seen their full potential yet. Both games where they played Incineroar resulted in losses. Is Field Day's usual 1v1 main not as effective in a 2v2 setting? We are more optimistic that Field Day just hasn't hit their stride yet. Field Day does have wins with Rob and Min Min though, so we know they have other tools to win games besides Incineroar. Our prediction is that Field Day's best games are ahead of them, and that they will fight to become a part of the higher ranks. FCP Zavi enters the league in the middle of the pack. After opening with a loss playing as Donkey Kong, FCP Zavi made a wise adjustment to Young Link, who they seem much more comfortable with. FCP Zavi's Young Link has two wins, including some great plays most notably when guarding enemy recovery. They have shown success defending opponents' get-up options from the stage, as well as following them off the edge to exploit their recovery. FCP Zavi has found a groove with Young Link, and we can't wait to see if this momentum carries them to the upper ranks. Retrofro showed up big to the league, opening with huge damage dealt and three wins out of their four matches. Retrofro has shown the most prominent projectile game of any other fighter. Equally as aggressive as Campy, if you manage to approach, Retro can fight as if they don't need projectiles at all. With this ability, Retro creates a huge presence, forcing opponents to engage, or otherwise, suffer a barrage of damage from a distance. Unfortunately, Retro lost in a tough 1v1 situation, but we've had a sneak peek from the preliminaries at how clutch Retro can be. Swack Attack shows up to the league with brutal Ike gameplay, boasting the stats to secure a top 5 ranking. They have the highest average KOs per game so far with 4.5 and a very high overall damage output. We see Swack Attack making big moves in moments where it counts. They secured their second win in a one-on-one -on -one situation. Swack Attack is undefeated, although has only played two matches so far, so we look forward to seeing their stats continue to reflect their heavy hitter playstyle in the upcoming fights. KBFYI brings out their deadly Corrin to secure the number 4 spot. KBFYI is undefeated in the league so far and showed us a good balance of damage and KOs with little deaths. They showed us a fearless playstyle, diving into the action regardless of their own percentage. KBFYI's willingness to risk being KO'd is clearly paying off for them. They have twice as many kills as deaths in all of their matches. KBFYI is making it apparent how strong of a contender they really are. KBFYI, 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 Calvin introduced us to a different character of theirs for every match so far and played well with all of them. Calvin has the highest KO differential in the league so far with 10. Calvin showed us their aggressive playstyle and explosive damage output which was also their downfall during a one-on-one -on -one situation, ending in their only loss of the league so far. Even though Calvin isn't undefeated, they grab the number three spot with the quality of their play so far. We can expect Calvin to remain consistent in the coming matches and continue to contend for the top ranks. The Bardmeister secures their spot at number two with an undefeated record. Bard's damage output is among the highest, and damage taken among the lowest. They have also had the most clutch moment of the league so far with a 2v1 win as Little Mac. We can expect more clutch plays from Bard. QWERTY cast regulars know they're a fighter who doesn't panic under pressure, and has a reputation for making a comeback. We can definitely expect the Bardmeister to remain in competition for the highest ranks. Gray welcomed our participants to the league with a 6-KO winning match as Ganon, followed by two more wins with Samus. 
their high kill, low death statistics and overall offensive presence place them at number one. Gray also showed us their efficiency with the fastest KO in League so far. They aren't too far ahead of the number two spot, however, and they have their toughest matches ahead of them. So let's see how Gray manages to defend their place at the top. Our first low light start is KBFYI as Robin using an up B above the stage, but me too ain't having none of that. At number four is Retro Fro. Incineroar sends Retro flying off the left side of the stage and starts charging up their smack move ready for the recovery, but Retro is not ready to recover. Number three features multiple failures, starting with the Bardmeister, who just does not make it back, followed by Nerd Cruncher, who also just drops. And then finally, V-Shift, who just straight up bounces off the wall. What are you guys doing? From the same match, V-Shift again using some good teamwork here, but they get a little too greedy as he tries to get back and gets properly whacked off. And finally, our number one top spot lowest lowlight is Kelly playing Snake. A tough character to master for sure, even tougher if you're on a team as we see here. Here it comes, the team kill C4 on Pikachu, the poor baby, but as if to add insult to injury, Samus catches him off the edge and sends him straight down the spike. At number 5 is Scat playing Ness. Right off the bat, his teammate is killed and Scat has to hold the stage. Despite the odds, Scat managed to hold on with a great back throw. Next, we have V-Shift and Nerd Cruncher. The two work together like they are drift compatible. Boom, bam, nice double kill. Coming in at number 3 is Nerd Cruncher and Swack Attack. The Goon Brothers themselves. We see their opponent trying everything to stay away from these terrible two, but their teamwork is unmatched. Oh, the grab. See ya, DK. Our number two spot is Gray Marker, right at the start of the match, just look at him on the left here as he grabs and absolutely punishes this Pikachu. No, you're not getting back, he said. And here it comes, there it is, zero to death, fantastic start to the match, not for Pikachu. And finally, we have the Bardmeister at number one. Watch close as he texts the inside of the fuckhouse to save himself from sure death. The team split up and Bard gets the kill on Retro, bringing him down to one stock. Unfortunately, his teammate is right behind, but it doesn't phase Bard as he sends Retro's teammate flying into the abyss. The face-off begins. Bard at 105%, Retro at 0%. It does not look good. Retro even grabs Bard and slaps him here a couple times like, Don't ruin this for me, but Bard is hanging in there hitting Retro to the edge of the stage, trying to get any advantage he can. The close counter, but bam, 30%, bam, KO for the win. What a play.